Hello everyone and welcome to this introductory course on Continuum Mechanics. Continuum Mechanics is one of the most fundamental courses in engineering mechanics as well as civil engineering, geoscience, physics and some other fields. And here uh, we study Continuum Mechanics in engineering mechanics and specifically solid mechanics. So let's get started. What is a continuum in continuum mechanics? We all know that materials are made of molecules and atoms. And in molecular or atomic scale, the material is discrete. But in continuum mechanics, we deal with the magnitudes, which are much bigger than the atomic scale. Problems like deflection of a beam or stress in a pressurized tube or contact problem, for example, are such problems that we deal with uh, and we use continuum mechanics as a tool to solve them. So in all of those problems, we assume that the material is continuous. So uh, by giving you a better idea, let's let's discretize an ideal material. And by ideal material, I mean the material, the conventional material that we use in uh, daily structural design, for example. So we discretize uh, we discretize an ideal material. Let's say a piece of metal into two, for example. Then you have two pieces of metal. If you infinitely discretize this piece of metal, you will have infinitely particles. This is way too important. We use the term particle. Uh, so infinite particles of metal, which always sit next to each other. So that means that if you just cut some part of a metal, you will have another particle of metal next to it. And in continuum mechanics, the size also is important. So for example, uh, suppose that the air molecules are uh, at room temperature, they have uh, <clears throat> a dimension size of 5 times 10 to minus 8 meter. So when we compare these molecules to an airplane wing, suppose you want to know what occurs uh, around an airplane wing, we can assume that these molecules are continuous or they're continuum. What is continuum mechanics? Continuum mechanics is a tool. This is also way too important. That provides formulation and solution to boundary value problems which are commonly used in engineering world. Boundary value problems uh, actually refers to three categories of problems we face in engineering mechanics. We have uh, type of problems which are under prescribed displacement or the second category, and the second category is prescribed traction. So they are under uh, different kind of, uh, you know, of forces, for example. But traction is a different kind of uh, concept. I will clarify later. And then we have uh, kind of problems which are under mixed displacement and traction boundaries. So it, it will cover all these man value problems. And indeed, in continuum mechanics, we study the relationship among various phenomena irrespective of material structure. So it is not important if you have a, ma a material with fine grain size or the ones with very rough or big uh, grain size. We do, not, we do not take care of this in continuum mechanics. We all know it as a continuum. Okay. So, I here said that uh, 
tool is a very important terminology here because it, it refers to the knowledge and approach that we use, we come across in continuum mechanics. We do not model anything in continuum mechanics, at least in, in the introductory part. So we find the proper tool in continuum mechanics. So a brief history in continuum mechanics, which is mostly classical. So it is first is attributed to Newton, where uh, when he uh, used the second uh, law of motion, where he said f equals to m times a. And here a was the derivative of the velocity with respect to time, where v again was the, <clears throat> the velocity of uh, actually uh, uh, the position with respect to time. So it was the second derivative of x with respect to time gives you the acceleration. And here, uh, actually, uh, Newton assumed the material to be continuum because a continuum is differentiable. If you have some discontinuity, so your function, uh, for example, your, your material is not differentiable then uh, Euler actually contributed to the Eulerian point of view, which is commonly used in fluid mechanics. And we have Lagrange, who contributed to the Lagrangian point of view, which is commonly used in uh, solid mechanics. And also we have the combination of both Eulerian Lagrangian point of view, which is mostly used in uh, fluid solid interaction and uh, air elasticity, for instance. We have Cauchy, who contributed to the concept of stress. So we have uh, Piola and then Kirchhoff. Uh, so their combined name is known as, uh, you know, uh, is actually tied. Their combined name is tied with their novel stress concepts. And they have so many others who contributed to con uh, continuum mechanics and actually to the modern continuum mechanics. So, why do we need to learn continuum mechanics? Actually, continuum mechanics is the very first step in gaining the no uh, gaining knowledge in advanced mechanics. It is like the alphabet of a language. So, to read or write a scientific paper in engineering mechanics, in advanced topics, you need to know continuum mechanics. Uh, it is also vastly used in analytical and numerical uh, solutions. So, for example, from an uh, from a solid uh, mechanics point of view, we have courses like elasticity, plasticity, finite element method, fractional mechanics, uh, plate and shell theory, composite analysis, and all of these analyses we heavily use continuum mechanics. And also, uh, in developing theories, you need to pick the proper tool. Uh, when you want to have the best analysis, you have to select the proper tool. And Continuum Mechanics provides you this uh, opportunity to select the right tool for your analysis. So, uh, this course is actually uh, devised based on uh, the curriculum and most of the universities for the introduction to continuum mechanics because in some of the universities continuum mechanics is uh, divided into two parts where we have the introductory and the complementary part so uh, in the introductory part we have uh, these topics here for the solid mechanics of course uh, we have their preliminary math on tensor analysis and here we use the tensor uh, analysis or tensor algebra here. Uh, it is more or less similar to matrix analysis, but they are uh, two different terminal, uh, two different uh, concepts. Then we have the kinematics of a continuum or the strain concepts. We have the stress, and we also come up uh, with the field equations. 
which actually are the conservation laws, uh, the five conserv conservation laws in uh, classical mechanics, the principle of conservation of mass, the principle of linear momentum, uh, the principle of momentum of momentum, the principle of conservation of energy, or the first thermodynamic law, and entropy inequality, or the second thermodynamic law. So, uh, who are the learners, or what? Uh, who are uh, the students uh, for this course? Uh, so, I would say that uh, this course is suitable for solid mechanics students. However, uh, some uh, other fields, for example, fluid students can also benefit from this course. Uh, however, their curriculum is a bit different. Um, also, geoscience students or physics students, civil students can also benefit uh, uh, from the first uh, or maybe uh, the first three uh, uh, modules here. But in geoscience, I think it's a bit different because, you know, their, their definition of a continuum is quite different. So, for example, in soil, uh, you have different particles. They are not in atom. Uh, you have you have a bunch of you know particles next to each other, but they are not in atomic scales. But they are completely separate. So, I guess that it is quite different. So maybe the first uh, chapter is uh, is good for just the geoscience students, but civil engineers uh, can use all the chapters or modules. And uh, for engineers who would like to understand the origin of some of the basic concepts in uh, mechanics, strain, stress, and engineers who want to go beyond their graduate course, for example, the mechanics of materials, where we assume that the material is completely perfect without any porous, void, imperfection, uh, or for example, in dynamic analysis uh, during the graduate course you assume that the material is rigid however that is not true so uh, the textbooks that I use uh, as the first textbook and the main textbook is the introduction to continuum mechanics by Lai, Rubin and Krempel fourth edition 2010 uh, published by Elsevier is a very nice book uh, for uh, the, uh, for the case of uh, educational purposes, and uh, it also includes uh, numerous exercises which is suitable for students. Uh, and uh, this one is rather. New Continuum Mechanics Modeling of Material Behavior by Martin H. Satt. Uh, he is a well-known professor in Elasticity. Uh, also published by Elsevier. And, uh, you know, uh, there, there are a bunch of uh, good books out there. You can uh, pick and, uh, you know, it's just important that you pick a book and continue because the concepts are the same but um, you may face different annotation so take care of that when you buy uh, a book or when you pick a book uh, old books are a bit heavy and uh, the annotation is uh, also difficult but uh, in you know new books like the ones that I already mentioned uh, the annotation is quite you know understandable and you can appreciate uh, the concepts very easily so they did not get into uh, you know uh, that complicated kind of stuff but uh, there are very very nice books you're free to um, select whatever you want really nice books in this uh you know topic okay so actually this wraps up uh the introductory video on this course and uh that's it